All right, if we go, if we go down there, that might help us. But I don't see how we get from there to to there. Hello. Uh, we're looking at our map here, and well, we're a little lost. So um, uh, maybe if the cartographer had made it a little clearer on which way we should go, it might work out better. Hello and welcome to this episode of The Campaign Creator. Well, it's map making time and today we're going to be making a random generic jungle map. Could be anything really, I just need jungle maps from time to time. And what we're going to be looking at specifically in today's video is how to direct our players in terms of moving around our map. So as with uh, all map making videos on this channel, this particular map making video is sponsored by Dungeon Fog. Dungeon Fog providing me with access to all of their tools. Uh, you can use Dungeon Frog, uh, Fog free of charge, but you are restricted in terms of the assets that you have access to. You can, of course, sign up for a sub subscription, and we have a discount code down below if you do want to get that subscription. And uh, in that case, then, you have access to everything. Now, what I really like about Dungeon Fog is that they release map packs, asset packs, and the like on a very regular basis. We've just had animals, we've just had hellish landscapes and wilderness landscapes, which we'll be using some of those tools today. And there's even more coming out in October to celebrate Halloween as well as other bits and pieces. So if you haven't checked them out already, go check them out. So this is the standard interface for Dungeon Fog. I have created a very large space. It's 40 by 40. It's huge, absolutely huge. If you have not yet heard about their Project Deos, Project Deos is going to turn this into a desktop application. At the moment, it runs on the web, which has its advantages and also its disadvantages. But there's our big square. Now, why did I want a big square? I want to put a temple in the middle of it. Recently, I was in um, Tokyo Disney Sea, which is their second Disneyland park, and we were doing the uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Crystal Skull ride. And there was this wonderful large Aztec temple. It was very, very cool, very exciting uh, to be on. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So when we when we talk about all this kind of stuff, we immediately, immediately, I think anyway, we need to start adding in some levels and things. So the first thing going to do is this ground level. We're going to call this ground level um, topography. Okay. And just remember to press enter after naming it. And then this upper one is going to be called our ground floor. Now the topography for floor, I'm going to hide. Uh, I'm going to come back to topography. I'm going to hide our top floor. So I'm just looking at the topography floor. Um, this is all about planning and plotting our our shape. So I'm going to make it bluish, kind of bluish. Doesn't really matter what it is. I'm going to make this grid a lot more subtle. So I'm going to knock that back. And the reason why we're going to be doing this is because we're going to be doing some painting here. And again, I'm going to paint in color. If you haven't watched one of my Dungeon Fog tutorials before, you'll realize that I like to map out my geography first. So this is topography, the shape of the land. So here's what I'm going to do. Control scroll wheel allows you to zoom in and zoom out. Don't worry, it's not a dungeon fog tutorial. I mean, it's, well, it kind of is, but it is. But it is, but it isn't. It's bonus, it's freebie, whatever. I'm gonna make the thickness of my brush tool very high so that I can start to, to draw some shapes. So generally speaking, a river in a jungle is always a good, a good thing for the characters to start and to follow. So I'm gonna mark off here. And yes, I realize I'm doing this in the inverted color. I'm gonna mark off a river which is going to wend its way upwards this way, and it's going to get thicker as it comes down here because I want the, the players to have some water water shenanigans first before they, before they arrive at the river. And we're gonna have a nice big curvy bend there. So, all right, perfect. So we're gonna have a river. It's gonna be a river for us. Um, let us actually, let us, let us change this. So we're going to make this green because it's a jungle. And then we're going to come and select these tools and make them blue because, yeah, it's, it's a river. So it should probably be river color. 
Um, there we are. And then this one needs to be blue. This one needs to be blue. You see, this is what happens in my head. I do stuff and then I'm like, oh, that's dumb. That's dumb. Let's do it this way. Okay, so I think that's all the river stuff made blue. Okay, so now we've got our river. Great. Fantastic. Lovely. I also want to to make sure that the players don't go off track. So I'm going to go brownish here. And I'm going to say, thank you very much. Uh, we want sort of a brown color. I'm going to say that over here is a cliff side. So this is going to be cliff over here. Okay. Uh, coming in from a waterfall. That that works quite well. And maybe a little bit of cliff over here too, and a little bit over there, which means that's going to be a waterfall, so that's fine. Uh, the shape of the cliff is not important at the moment, but the reason why I'm putting in cliffs here is so that when the players arrive, they're going to arrive on the water, then they're going to discover this large temple here. Well, not a large temple, it's a temple space. They're going to discover the temple space, but they're not going to be able to go anywhere else. So either they're going to engage with the temple or they're going to leave completely. That's absolutely fine. I could also make it heavy foliage, but I think a cliff makes it more dramatic. This is pretty much all that I'm going to do in terms of my geography. I am now going to go into my actual layering. And that means I go to the ground floor and need to uh, turn off the uh, oops, turn off the uh, hex altogether. Um, just make it completely invisible or just show just show grid, hide the grid. And we want to make sure that uh, we don't we don't see the floor either because we're just going to be building on top of this. So this is the idea here that we have. We've got our geography down there, so that's absolutely fine. We will come and fill this in. Don't worry. We will eventually show our stage. But for now, we don't need to worry about it because we're going to be working on this territory. I'm going to very quickly outline the building because that's important. And the floor. Yeah, it's an interesting color. Let me get rid of these levels. We don't need to see those anymore for a while. Uh, we're in stone. Notice the new layout that we've got uh, with the update of uh, the last week or so, as a matter of fact, from the time of this video anyway. We've now got the new layout, which I think is very exciting. I do like this. I see that it's... Um, Let's uh, play around with some colorization. Let's make it a little more yellow, I think. That's too, too yellow. And let's increase the saturation a little bit. I don't know why, but I feel like yellow is the appropriate color for this, this structure. And then the walls, we're going to do the same thing. I'm not going to colorize it. I'm just going to tweak the uh, saturation levels on these things and drop that down a little bit too much. OK, somewhere there. Right, so now we're going to lay out our temple. We've already established that the geography is going to be driving a lot of this. So I can now zoom in here and move on over to the temple itself. This is a cliff face, so this is our back wall. That much we do know. So let's do this. And wait, what was that? I didn't check. What a silly nana. Oops, uh, what did I do? Oh, I just uh, re-hid the, re -hid the stage, basically. So let me come here and go there. Don't show me the stage, OK? So everything's fine. Don't panic much. I'm going to come here, and we're going to go one across. So that's 14, so 14 down because pyramid shape, right? And he missed anyway. <laughs> So we're going to come back here, grab this point, and move it over. That is our basic shape. I'm not particularly inspired by the wall thickness. So I think we can make that like, say, 12. So we get this really thick sense. Uh, maybe the inner wall shouldn't be 12. Maybe it should be 2. So we get our full, full squares worth of space, I suppose you could call it. Am I happy with that texture? It's not blowing my hair back, I'll be absolutely honest with you. Um, so it's about changing that up. But that's not what we're going to be looking at. We're not looking at the design of the temple today, although that's perfect. That is perfect. I just don't want it to be... I want it to be like... there-ish, I think. Yeah, that makes me happy. OK, we're not talking about interior design of temples, though. I mean, we certainly could. What I've purposefully done is left the space here. That's what I do want to talk about. 
This is going to be a gigantic waterfall, which is going to flow over and, and cause the characters to have to abandon the ship so that they are then positioned right next to the temple. That's important. They need, however, clues on where to go. So that means I'm going to create another little temple square here. Let me just go back to this uh, um, nightshade version. I might as well make it look, look appropriate as I go. Uh, or similarly toned, I should say, something like that. I can re I can I can sort it out. So I'm now going to start creating some clues that there is a structure. So that as they're going to come in, I'm going to create perhaps a block here, not a very big one, ten foot by ten foot block over there, and on the reciprocal side, that would actually be in a cave that would be in the actual cliff itself. So that's no good. So I've got to grab this and just move the whole thing down to there and maybe into the river a little bit. And I'm going to come across here and go clink, 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 clink. OK, so we have this wonderful pillar, this gate as we arrive. And then before we plunge over the edge, we're going to do the same thing down here. So that the PCs know this is a marked territory. I always think it's important to try and indicate to your PCs where they should be going. They're going to see this map and they're going to know that something's up. Now, if they've approached on foot, they'll be coming in from this side. We're going to make this all dense jungle so they can barely see what's going on and the like. Um, we might put in a statue or two for them to, to have a look at. But generally speaking, that's what we need. Now, we also then need, uh, I'm going to put an entranceway into this. Let's make it three. We were 14. so. Uh, eight and eight, uh, it leaves us with a six, um, seven, eight. Okay, we'll go, we'll, we'll do it this way. And we'll pop in there. I'm running symmetry in my head in terms of, of how much space uh, we need. I think it was 12. We can always come back if, it's, if that's incorrect. Um, Right, and we will stack these appropriately so that this unnamed room sits underneath that one. So we get a nice clean wall. It's just about keeping things nice and neat. And we'll match the colors up. I'll do that later. That's, that's not important for now. So our players are now going to come whooshing in here. They're going to wash up here. They're going to encounter something in here, perhaps, or perhaps not. We're not entirely sure. I think what we could do then is we have an opportunity to create a structure that may or may not mislead them. I don't want to say mislead them because that implies uh, intent. But I'm going to make it a three by three by three block here. And because we want it to be slightly different, I'm going to make this uh, a, a tower, a circular tower, a ruined circular tower. I'll come back to to that effect in a little bit. That's just set dressing, basically. But if we put in a, a tower here, a ruined tower, perhaps, or perhaps this should be a wooden structure and it shouldn't it shouldn't be stone at all. It should be a cannibals camp, for example. That could be quite fun. I think that could work quite well. Uh, you know, just in terms of, of creating some tension or, or, or giving the characters something to panic about, which is always good. It's always good to do that. So we're going to have this little wooden structure down here that they can they can stress over, they could encounter if they start going in this direction. And this wooden structure could be the first of many cannibal beginnings. Um, so again, just to try and drive them back this way, or maybe to push them into cannibal village, who knows, in which case they'll walk off that side and they'll come in on this side and, and uh, discover that the cannibals have this tem 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 temple as their center. Now all it is is a case of saying, OK, I think I've pretty much controlled the playing space that my characters are going to be in. And that, for me, is the important thing. The rest is just set dressing, utilizing what we have, exploring and discovering. I just want to see, um, looking at, 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 yes, looking at making this map look as if it's, it's pretty, using the tools at hand. I'm going to... I'm going to say that this is as far as you need to watch in terms of using geography to control the players, in terms of using a map to create something exciting. This is a generic temple map. Whenever your players are on a river, they could come across this map. They could come across this temple without any issues whatsoever. 
It's about controlling the movement through the space so that they go where you want them to go. They could try and climb down the cliff. Not a problem. Off they go and then they're into the jungle and they have a random encounter. You haven't lost anything. You've spent a couple hours building a cool temple. They didn't find it. Well, it's their loss, to be perfectly honest with you. It's, it's, not, it's not your loss. Uh, that's my personal opinion on how one should look at maps when you create them. Um, I find them very relaxing to create as an exercise. I, I really enjoy it. And I hope that you would too. If this tutorial has been useful, if you want more, let me know. I, I don't know what to to discuss in these kinds of videos where, where we're talking about plans and things. I, I will set dresses. You've already seen the final product because that would have been at the front of the video. I hope you remember to do that. But yes, this is my process. This is what I look at when I'm, I'm thinking of designing a, a location. What are my players going to be doing? How can I control that movement with this kind of, of layout? And creating a generic map never hurts. Until next time, I wish you and yours the very happiest of campaign creation.